Welcome to American Black Journal. I'm Stephen Henderson. General Motors Vice President Ed Welburn made history in 2005 when he became the first African American to lead a global design team in the auto industry. Now, some 44 years after he joined GM, Welburn is going to retire on July 1st. As global design chief, he built a network of 10 design centers and a team of more than 2,500 men and women in seven countries. Throughout his career, Welburn has won dozens of prestigious awards, including a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Detroit Free Press. And GM rededicated its Center for African American Art at the Detroit Institute of Arts in his honor. American Black Journal contributor Marlo Stoudemire sat down with Welburn to talk about his history-making career. Welcome to American Black Journal, Ed. How are you? I'm doing great. It's great to be here. Good, good. Thanks for coming on the show. You know, a lot of people want to know how you became interested in a career in the auto industry, especially in design. Well, I think that trigger, that inspiration came at a very early age. Yeah. I mean, I've been drawing cars since I was like two and a half. And cars are around me. My father had an auto repair shop. And I think that's where the trigger came from. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, with that trigger, talk about the trajectory of your career. Like, from the beginning, key milestones, points that really had some inspiration for you, but more than anything, lessons learned to get you to where you are today. Well, it's been quite a journey. It's been uh, a fun journey. But um, like I said, I was crazy about cars. Parents took me to the Philadelphia Auto Show at age eight. And as we walked in, there's this great concept car there. And when I saw that thing, I mean, you know, I m remember like it was last week. Mm -hmm. My mother on my right, my father on my left. And there it was, the Cadillac concept car. And I said, when I grow up, I want to be a designer for that company. Wow, wow. And so when you started working at General Motors, Motors, Motors in the early 70s as an intern and then finally getting on board in 1972, talk about some career highlights and different points of engagement that you believe defined your career and helped you get to where you are. Yeah, first I'd have to give a lot of credit to Howard University. I was in the College of Fine Arts studying both design and sculpture because mm -hmm. I feel as though Automobiles are very sculptural objects and you need to have that background. Right. So then I did an internship with GM and finished up my senior year and then I was there off to GM and the big leagues and these guys are really, really good. Uh, some of the key moments would have been, you know, at the end of my first year uh, doing some Buick Riviera concepts for Bill Mitchell, who's the head of design then, mm -hmm. and then the progression through design studios. There was a point though where I developed a uh, high-speed research car. Mm -hmm. And for me that was the big, it was a big step for me because not only was I sketching, but I was managing the project. Mm. And I learned the value of collaboration, bringing people from different disciplines together to create something great. Ah, so when you bring different people together, I'm sure that there's some moments where you have to kind of step outside of your comfort zone, right? If you had some young designers listening to your story, how would you talk about that part, the comfort zone piece? Yeah, uh, you know, that, that's something that I love to talk about, you know, getting out of your comfort zone, whether it, it's the designer of the project or who you're working with or where you're working. You know, I. I spent a year in Germany at our studios there. Mm -hmm. Talk about being out of my comfort zone initially. Right. It ended up being a very rewarding experience. I say the same for other projects I've been involved in that seem very challenging or out of my comfort zone. Yeah. They were some of the most rewarding projects that I've been involved in. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure without stepping out of those comfort zones, you probably wouldn't have had the trajectory to get to where you are today. Well, well exactly. I, I wouldn't have gone into design probably. Right, right. So speaking of design, tell us very briefly, what goes into designing a car? What, what does that look like? What does it feel like? It's a big subject, uh, but really it's creating, creating great design. You need a strong vision, a clear vision for uh. what you want to do up front. And then you need to get that collaboration that I learned very early in my career between design and engineering. Once you have that in place, that foundation, I think you can do great things. And it's, you know, you go through the sketch project and gradually develop into full-size clay models and mm. finished models. And, and you're having market research, you know, you, that 
that uh, dialogue with customers is very important. Right, because if important. you have to know who you're designing for because a lot of people say if you design for everyone, you design for no one, right? Well, that's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and, and if you design for yourself, you're just designing it for <laughs> one person. Yeah. yeah, so, but you know what? Coming back to you, you know, when I think about the things that I read about your career, which is amazing, the first thing that comes to mind to me is I wonder what type of challenges he faced along his professional journey? What were some of the roadblocks and how did you overcome those things? Because I'm sure it wasn't just a one track. You probably had a lot of bumps and. Well, you know, it's, you know, I think a lot of people probably think, you know, those challenges were from an ethnic perspective and, and that's true. But mm -hmm. I think the first challenge, because I had this mission from childhood mm -hmm. and marched all the way through school, you know, middle school, high school, went to a great high school. Mm -hmm but it did not really prepare me for a career in design. Ah. And so when it was time to get into a college, mm -hmm. I got one rejection after another, another. Wow. in design schools. Howard University accepted me, and it was a terrific experience that I had at that school. Historically black college, right? So, you know, a lot of people really focus on the fact that you're the first African American to be the chief global designer, right, for a major auto uh, company. Uh, talk a little bit about what that means to you and how others can follow in that path and maybe learn some lessons from you being a pioneer and trailblazer and what could they do? It's, uh, I'd have to say that, you know, when I first started work at GM mm -hmm. and I was the first African American uh, that General Motors had hired to design cars mm -hmm. and did not know that until I started work and I quickly realized that I was representing more than myself mm. and I, I just wanted to design cars you know and you know right. my life dream was it was there and you right. know, I was part of but um, I was representing more than myself because mm -hmm. you know every time you do a sketch you sign it it goes up on display and everyone knows who did it and everyone's interested in seeing it. what can this guy do yeah. and and every step along the way you know I was the first chief designer right right that was African-American so you know and supervising a team of designers so people were interested in in that but you know I welcome that challenge so whether it's uh, African American or any other background right it, it matters about the work and if you're strong in what you do right that that should stand above but specifically to young African Americans right what if career advice would you give them well it's you know, you can't just dream mm -hmm. about being a designer or a doctor or you know NFL athlete I mean you've got to commit you've got to work hard mm. you've got to work hard you've got to push hard you've got to research you've got to contact people who are in that profession and ask advice you know I wrote my first letter to GM when I was 11 Wow Wow I wrote GM design wanted to know what did I need to do mm -hmm. what kind of classes do I need that I need to take what kind of schools do I need to go to and they sent me great information Right. And I just follow their lead. Yeah, you know, and that's good, you know, and I, and I think that one of the things of having people who are very accomplished and subject matter experts in industries is that a lot of people forget that they have other disciplines and non-negotiables and values that can translate anywhere. What are some of those things for Ed, even if you're not talking about design? Yeah. Very clear values and non-negotiables. You know, I, as I think about it, what's most important to me is how I treat the people who work with me mm -hmm. and work for me. In many ways, I consider them to be people who work with me. Right. And I treat them as individuals. There are close to 3,000 people that report to me. Mm -hmm. And I treat them all as individuals. Right. And I really care about their well being and want to have an organization in which they feel free to create and bring forward their great ideas. Wow, now that sounds like a true definition of leadership. And you know, um, being recognized as a, a global leader uh, is one thing, but having recognition in Detroit. You know, this year the Detroit Free Press honored you with its first automotive yeah. difference maker lifetime achievement award. You know, how did that make you feel professionally and personally? Tell us about that. I was 
very proud to get it, felt very humbled, kind of stunned in some ways. Uh, and it felt good, you know, because mm. I, I, you know, I feel as though I received it. I represent, like I said, 3,000 people, not all in Detroit. They're all over the world. We have mm. 10 studios around right. the world. Right. And to lead them and have them work together as one superpower design organization is really kind of cool. Well, we appreciate you here in Detroit. Um, but on the flip side of that, it's another thing to also be recognized by your peers. And so we know that GM rededicated uh, its Center for American Art, right, in your honor at the Detroit Institute of Arts. Tell us a little bit about that and, and, and how that ties into your legacy, right? I'm still stunned. <laughs> I, am. I, I had no warning, none at all, not until the moment that I'm standing there in that wing with Mary Barr and the rest of the leaders of GM when they told me, you know, and I was stunned. Yeah. And then as I looked around the room and I saw a painting created by my instructor at wow. Howard University, it doesn't get much more emotional than that. That's it still does as I think of that moment. That's, That's pretty awesome. Cool. You know, um, and, and I really like the authentic authentic response to that because we didn't want the academic response. And so let's have a little fun now. I think we know a little bit about Ed and people can read up about you, but when I think about cars and I think about the man who's responsible for putting so many concepts and things on the road, you know, we, we, we say, well, what's his favorite car? Which one really gets you going? Which one do you want to ride off into the sunset in? It's, <laughs> there's so many cars that I love, but I, I'd have to say Corvette Stingray, 1963, Corvette Stingray split window coupe. Wow. That is it. What that color and it. why? Uh, ooh, silver with a red leather interior. That car had an influence on not only that whole generation of Chevrolets. You look at every other Chevrolet mm -hmm. that came right after that. They had a lot of that feel. But every Corvette since then has been inspired by that car. I like that. So we got about a minute left. And, you know, 44 years, right? Still look good, man. And you're retiring July 1st. You know, and a lot of people want to know, what's next for Ed? And how does that matter to Detroit and the rest of the world? Yeah, I, I feel as though uh, I have many more races to run, um, a lot more to do. I have uh, formed the Wellburn Group. And through that, I'll do some consulting on a number of projects. I will be working with uh, design schools. Uh, I have a book project that I'm working on, and I'll continue to consult with General Motors. We have a massive project designing an all new design center, and I'm working very close with the architect, and we'll continue to do that. That's awesome. We appreciate you for being on American Black Journal, and it was a pleasure, Ed. Oh, it's great. Thank, Thank you. you.